A Vietnamese TikTok chef is clapping back at the online haters about her upcoming expensive Vietnamese restaurant. David, we got to talk about this online beef, or should I say tit ball? <laughs> I try from, to say it. I try. Hey, man, from silly to serious, we're covering everything. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the silly lane, but there is some interesting issues within the Asian American or Vietnamese community that it brought up. And or long story short, this is all contained on Next Shark. Tway the Bay, who is a famous TikTok chef, she's partnering with some non Asian people to open up a restaurant that's going to be $75 a person in West Hollywood. Next Shark had a lot of comments against her. She made a video clap back, and this just sparked a bunch of discussions. Of course, a lot of people supporting her, a lot of people going against her, and a lot of people in the middle. So we got to break it down, get into the comment section, give our own takeaways because, you know, silly to serious, sometimes it's fun to talk about the silly things. All right, first off, though, we do have to play her video clip. So, Next Shark had posted an article about me a couple weeks ago talking about the opening of Didi and the partnership with Hwood Group. And in going through the comments, I noticed that there was a lot of uproar about how the food at Didi is priced to be, on average, $75 per person. So, let's get into it. Firstly, I just want to lay out the question. Why can't Southeast Asian food be in that price range? Is it so outrageous for Vietnamese cuisine or any other type of Southeast Asian cuisine to be held to a higher standard? Because, I mean, I get it. I love me a good hole in the wall pho spot as much as the next person, but Didi is not that. The restaurant is located directly on Restaurant Row, where the average price point for a meal at any of these other places on the same street can run for $100 per person, if not more. And Vietnamese cuisine is constantly regarded as the cheaper alternative to eating out. But the vision I had for Didi was to bring that same familiar, homey feel of my culture's cuisine into an elevated market. One that can really push the culture forward in a space where most haven't and simultaneously make it less intimidating for people who have never ventured off into trying it. People tend to mistake Asian cuisine for being cheap and accessible. And while that's true, there's nothing wrong with that. But Vietnam also hosts some amazing Michelin star level quality food that consistently ranks on Asia's 50 best restaurant list. That version of Vietnamese cuisine has yet to reach America. And I'm grateful to be someone that can lead that change to bring modern day Vietnam to LA. All I know is this, if I'm going to have my restaurant on one of the most famous blocks in Los Angeles on La Cienega Boulevard, in the middle of WeHo, I'm going to do it right. Didi isn't meant to be just a restaurant. The entire menu, the decor, the hospitality, everything involved is meant to be an experience. And I, for one, would confidently pay the price for the quality I know that I'm getting. Wouldn't you? Hey, man, listen. I just view this as some TikTok stuff, man. <laughs> because to be honest, I think that high-end Viet food has been bubbling for 10, you could argue, all the way to Crustacean, uh, you know, in, in, what is that, Beverly Hills or West mm. Hollywood. That was 25 years ago. But okay. it's true that your average person, which is TikTok represents your average person, you know, not everybody's a foodie on earth, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've been, there's a, I mean, if you've ever come to New York City, they do have some Vietnamese food and some of it can get pretty pricey, all right? So, uh, but I do want to say about Tway the Bay because I did do some food videos with her back in the day, like 2017. Um, she is a good chef. Like, even back then, I thought she yeah. was a good chef. And I'm sure she's only gotten better. She went to culinary school. She uh, she was very professional to work with. So I, I hope her success, you yeah. know. But I, I, hope, I hope she's building the Vietnamese... Yeah. Uh, Nobu or the Vietnamese Hakkasan, yeah. which is it is true that both those spots, even though they're Japanese and Chinese based on the menu, they do more cater to a non-Asian audience. And yeah. that's okay because you need to have, you know, the stuff in the enclave that's low end, mid end, high end, but then you need stuff that's on the West side, which is typically the West side of anything. New York or LA is more like not Asian. Yeah. You need that low, middle, high too, all the yeah. way up. I think there's a market for everything. But anyways, guys, I mean, listen, as far as we're just, I'm just going to rattle off some restaurant names of kind of higher end Vietnamese restaurants that we've known of for years now. Madame Vo, Monsieur Vo, even Saigon Social is kind of up there. Van Da, Bolero, they were really high end, but they did close down. Crustacean out in Beverly Hills. There's like uh, Gao Viet over in the Bay Area. Summer Rolls even in 626, even, right? Even Summer Rolls in 626. I'm sure you could drop $50 a person. Guys, this is not cheap Vietnamese food, but it is actually all 
pretty good. Shout out to An Choi. I think oh, yeah. An Choi was the first p- spot to do high end pho and Vietnamese food in Manhattan in 09. And since then, they've transitioned to Dion D. So. Yeah, you got Zol in over in Toronto, downtown Toronto. So, I mean, Colonial in Houston. There's, a, there's stuff. Bro. There's more stuff than people think. I'm not saying that the TikTok audience, because you got to be kind of like in the foodie world in these big metropolitan uh-huh. cities to know about it. But this is the first time that this whole debate got taken to TikTok. Right, right, right. So anyway, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, whether you broke boys or girls can afford her food or not, we need to celebrate her success because it's also the success of the Vietnamese and the Asian community. Uh, I mean, I, I think at, to an extent, I'm going to be honest, I don't think you have to celebrate her success. You don't have to support her and go well, to the restaurant. nobody has to do anything. No one has right? to do anything. But, and also the It internet, would be nice to. Yeah, it would the, be nice if the community got around each other and, and even if they kind of saw the pros and the cons of anybody or the, the thing and I mean, guys, still supported. Can I tell you this? That West Hollywood is not exactly a little Saigon type neighborhood, okay? In Are fact, you sure that's not really? In fact, West Hollywood is closer to anything, is closer to Thai town. Right, it's not that close, but it is closer to Thai right, town, right, right. where you know Thai people have their little their community out there. You and know? interestingly enough, there's actually a lot of high Thai res- high end Thai restaurants in America, yeah. but not in Thai town. Yeah, not in Thai town. But, but I though. think a lot of people forget that Southeast Asian cuisine is at that level because there is a lot of expensive Thai food. It really is. This is a comment against her or against the whole concept. Somebody saying, "I think she's missing the point." It's very simple. That food is simply too expensive for 99 percent of the people in the real world. It costs an arm and the leg. So I mean, we just are questioning who'd you make it for uh yeah i mean i don't like again i don't think she made it for the vietnamese enclave community i don't or, think so. or even necessarily asian, asian enclave, i mean right? but maybe not i mean but i mean i'm way, not saying that asian people won't go there yeah, but also again guys crustacean has existed that is a soup that's probably a hundred dollars per person plus it was like 150 a person Bro, realistically that, that's a lot ex- of seafood heavy stuff yeah it's a lot of seafood it's a lot of beef so i'm saying like that has existed now you could say crustacean by helen on and the on family like that's not for vietnamese people that's fine it's probably not solely for them but i'm just saying you know it's been around right 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 um Somebody said, people pay $75 per person for French or Italian food and nobody bats an eye. Why can't be the case for Southeast Asian cuisine? And then, of course, there was a lot of comments in that. But then somebody said, but yeah, if you go to Italy or France, food is not cheap at all. But when you go to Southeast Asia, you can get a bowl of pho for like less than a dollar. Again, man, I mean, Thai food. Thai food is very cheap in Thailand, but it can get pricey in America because people like it. Yeah, somebody said, if y'all are broke, just say that. And somebody said, STFU, you ain't eating there every day. This is the, the hilarious. <laughs> who's the- eating there every day? I mean, seriously, who's going to eat there every day? I think this is a Lao chef. He said, listen, if $75 is too much for you, go eat somewhere else. Simple as that. Stop crying about the price when most of y'all probably never even worked in the restaurant industry before. Mm. What, yo, you guys expected her to open up a typical hole in the restaurant, copy and paste Vietnamese restaurant? Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't think this is, dude... Opening up in West Hollywood is not going to jeopardize any sort of the mom and pop, you know, Vietnamese mm. restaurants that we know that uh, are, are very cheap and affordable. It does not threaten that. Also, I do think a lot of the people leaving the comments do not work or really work in the in the food industry. You know what the funny thing is, <laughs> Andrew? People who open up restaurants, whether they're in the enclave zone, but especially outside of the enclave zone, they always are like, man, I get so worried when my people come in because they are going to break down and be so critical yeah. of my menu. But my menu has to appeal to people outside of our world. Yep. Exactly. I mean, that, that is a difficult balance because you're juggling fish bowls because at the end of the day, America's hyper diverse. You know, I guess we all speak English, but like our taste buds are like very I different. Mean, like people in this fish bowl, still American, don't like what this fish bowl likes. You know who are the big, biggest critics of ethnic food? Is that ethnicity? Those people are the biggest critics. It's true. Yeah. Somebody said, 75 bro- f- bucks, bro. My grandma makes tick call every day. Bye. And somebody said, underrated comment. And somebody said, okay, then go eat your grandma's tick call, then bye. <laughs> of course, there was a lot of arguing, you know. VX, yeah. they, like to, they like to banter. Yeah. Also, I do feel like if Next Shark never posted this article, I don't even think that there's this discussion. Yeah. To be honest. Somebody said she clearly must not care, care about her own people that are middle class coming to the restaurant if she's charging these prices and putting it in that area. 
Yeah, I mean, goes this goes back to the again the criticism of any expensive Asian food where you can find a cheaper version. Listen, I mean, I've been to expensive Chinese restaurants. How come no one's getting mad at Chinese people, right, for charging like a hundred dollars for a Peking? But some duck? people do go against like how noodle or like a din tai fung. Yeah, of an- course, people can say you can leave whatever comment you want. You say it's overpriced, but I do think you got to eat there first. Yeah. You got to eat there I, and then I, you can roast it. I'll, I'll tell you my own personal opinion on it. Like, I always try to judge places for what they're trying to do. Like, if I'm in the West Side, whether it's uh, West, this city, West, the West Side is always bougie. West Seattle's like that too. West, West LA, West New York, West Village. I would say I have to look at it under the guise of like, the, the, the demographic it's appealing to. Exactly. Of course, I have my own opinion because I eat ultra cheap or ultra authentic ethnic food. And, you know, the food in the ethnic enclaves is starting to move higher end as well. That's but true. I have to understand the lens of, like, the, the, the main primary customer demographic of that spot. Yeah. Like, I, I have mean, to be relative. I mean, I do think if I had to say what she's trying to do, so what I think it's trying to do is bring Vietnamese food to that level where you kind of, it's like you go out and eat it before you go out. Mm. Like you can get lit there and it's fun and the vibe is cool because the restaurant group behind it also does a, a lot of nightlife. So of course they're going to make it super vibey probably with loud music. Right, like a Nobu or a Hakkasan, yeah, right? Like and a if Vietnam- it is a bunch of rich Persians or Armenians there Whatever. getting lit, having expensive uh, Via clams, lemongrass clams, yeah. then so be it, right? Dude, it doesn't threaten Orange County, man. This ain't for the Garden Grove crowd who so, wants pho, oxtail pho for like 13 bucks. It's not it. For me, though, I might be trying to see the ABGs maybe throwing the bottle, beer bottles David, at each other. It's okay to, David, it's okay to say that you're not going to be coming to this restaurant every day either. <laughs> it's okay to say that. I'm going to check it out if I'm on the west side. Somebody said TikTok and Chef, There's those are two things that do not fit together. Be it better to eat at a restaurant <laughs> of somebody who's not a TikToker. All right, that to me, is the best criticism of this restaurant. Literally, this comment. All other criticism, I'm not really with, but if you want to discredit it because she's a TikTok chef, uh, first of all, she has done a lot of pop-ups with uh, other chefs and other restaurants right, right. in New York and L.A., so she has She's got, valid. But she's she has valid. not. But you're right. She didn't work. I mean, what? Does, do people have to work at a French restaurant? She went to culinary school. She graduated from it. I mean, I don't know. I, I think a lot of it will just be... Up to the execution and, and the sous chefs and the, the system or whatever. The food this is going to speak for itself. The somebody food. Said, and then somebody said, all of y'all complaining about price. It's simple. Don't dine there. Are there cheaper alternatives? Sure. Go there and eat. If Brazilian food, French or Italian or even Japanese sushi can be priced high and no one bats an eye, then y'all can shut the hell up. I'm tired of Southeast Asian cuisines always being treated as secondhand food. People feel entitled and expected to be cheap when in reality, it takes more time and effort than Italian or French cuisines. And then somebody said, $75. That's clearly for influencers, ABGs, and white folks. There's a market for these people. Like we said, guys, Andrew. I wrote, Andrew, I could keep going on. There was I comments wrote, back and forth, back and forth. G- good point. Good point. Counterpoint. Also good counter counterpoint. Yo, I I love Viet food. I think Viet food is maybe my second or third favorite Asian food or type of food period in my life, honestly. It's incredible. Yo, I love Viet food. I love Viet food a lot. It's actually, yeah. So anyways, guys, but uh, I mean, overall, I mean, this is not the most serious issue. This this is going to happen w- again when the restaurant opens and there's going to be a super, a lot of judgy people who are judging the little bowl of like uh, braised short rib pho that she's going to have. And, you know, I, I will say this and, and let me be f- real because I've had pho at a lot of restaurants. I've paid $30 for pho and I've paid $13 for pho. Pho is one of those dishes that is kind of hard for me to pay a lot of money for. I've had the expensive pho, and it hasn't been that much better. But other Vietnamese dishes have been great at the higher end. Yeah. That's true. I think at the more macro end, because obviously, like I said, I hope Tway the Bay's restaurant is successful. Yeah. I think you know it has a chance out there because there's not a, uh, nobody's done like a Hakkasan but Viet yeah. concept yet. Um, it's almost like an influencer versus consumer thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you have a crowd that was probably never going to go to West Hollywood to begin with sort of judging you, but it is true that the influencers sometimes, the influencers sometimes can have like a, I don't want to say holier than thou or like yeah, put themselves on yeah. a pedestal type energy vibe. I can see that too. Yeah. I'm going to keep it real. I see what I see. Yeah, yeah. I do think her response could have been, uh, I, I think her video response could have had more tact. I think she could have shouted out to some more uh, high-end Vietnamese chefs. I think she could have acknowledged that Thai food has been at this price point for a decade or so, and no one's has batted an eye at it just because, you know, 
white people love Thai food. It's true. They do. Um, so I think that, yeah, her response could have been written better for sure. I think that criticism is fair, but honestly, when it comes to the price point of food, guys, the food will speak for itself. Yeah, the quality, listen, guys, the vibe, the and, 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 and like Asians, we might judge it on the food, right? But other people, they might be judging it only relative to other things on that West Hollywood street that it's on. You know what I mean? Because they party on that street David. four times a week. David. So it only has got to beat out like seven other spots. But obviously the Asians has got to beat out like 7,000 other spots in let, our mind. Let me do a shameless plug. We got our chili oil coming up. Smala, you can sign up at the link down below to get 5% off of your first order. Let me tell you this, Smala, it's a chili oil. It's not the cheapest chili oil. It's not as cheap as some of the Chinese brands, but it's got certain ingredients that do make it taste a certain way and kind of levels it up. So we sell it at, you know, not, not $7 a bottle. Right. So I'm excited about it, but honestly, some people might say it's a little too expensive for them. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like I we say? said, man, I think it's always a the struggle. You know, there. you got first generation, second generation, third generation thing. And let them know what you think in the comment section below. Valid arguments to go all around until next time with the hot pot boys. We out. Peace. Peace.